Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Anatomy with Alex. My name is Alexandra Ellis from aewellness.com, and Anatomy with Alex is my weekly show where I share anatomy and physiology in ways that are relevant to you and your life so that you can maximize your mobility and live pain-free and fill your brain with as many body nerd nuggets as we possibly can. Um, as you notice, I am tuning in from a different locale today. I'm also uh, broadcasting on Instagram Live too, so hello Instagram. Thanks for tuning in. Um, as always, for everyone, if you have any questions once we get going, drop your questions down into the comment box below and I'll answer them. And today I'm talking about muscle and fascia. So if you've ever wondered what keeps your heart beating or how that breakfast burrito you had this morning is making its way through your digestive system, I'll tell you all about it today. So muscle is uh, one organ in your body. It's one type of tissue in your body. And you have about six to 700 muscles on average. Um, you know, some people might have more, some people might have less. Uh, it just depends on how things, you know, fuse together. Um, there are some muscles that not everybody has, like your psoas minor. I think it's like 15% of the population has a psoas minor. Um, and then there's a percentage of people that just don't have one. So cool things like that. And your muscles account for 40% of your body's weight. So muscles, pretty important. Um, I know, right? We have a whoa, crazy comment over here off Instagram. I know, 40% of your body's weight comes from muscles. So the first type of muscle tissue is called smooth muscle. And smooth muscle is uh, involuntary control, meaning you can't tell smooth muscle to contract or really to do anything, it's on its own. Uh, you find it in internal organs, um, it is in your digestive system and intestinal walls, and smooth muscle is also what lines veins and arteries. Your smooth muscle is ruled by the enteric and autonomic nervous system. So enteric, we've talked about before, about the second brain and the guts on few, uh, previous episodes of Anatomy with Alex. The enteric nervous system um, is the nervous system that rules your digestive system. It's all on its own. And then your autonomic nervous system is the nervous system that you, uh, you don't have to think about. You don't have to control, which is kind of good. Um, now, the next type of muscle, oh, also about smooth muscle, and thanks for those of you who are tuning in, uh, Luciana, hello, and Miss Pamela, hello as well. Um, so b about smooth muscle, this is also the you know involuntary control when you have that fight or flight response. So when you see something, you're like, ah, scared. Um, it's the smooth muscle that's told by your nervous system to dilate or to constrict or um, you know, to release this hormone, things like that happens uh, a lot of times by way of smooth muscle. The next type of muscle is called cardiac muscle. And again, it's involuntary. And where do you think cardiac muscle is found? If you guessed heart, you would be right. Uh, so cardiac muscle is just in your heart. And the cool thing about cardiac muscle is that it has the ability to create its own um, electrical impulse. So all other muscles in your body, whether they're voluntary or not, your brain is telling them to contract. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago about how muscles actually work with the exception of your heart. Your brain doesn't need to tell your heart to beat because it has special cells uh, that are their own pacemakers. And they repeat this rhythmic, um, you know, electrical impulse that tells the a cardiac muscle to contract and relax in um, you know, a specialized pattern. Now, if you uh, have more than just that one node of cells doing the contracting, um, that's when you get something like a cardiac arrhythmia um, or a ventricular fibrillation where the heart is like freaking out and it's not making that coordinated contraction. And so when they do that electric shock, bah, the idea is to reset all of the cardiac um, you know, electrical impulses so that your heart beat starts up normally, kind of to like confuse and quiet the ones that shouldn't be contracting anyways, so that the cardiac node can go back to business as usual. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So the next type of muscle is called skeletal muscle. And for those of us that are movement nerds, this is the type of muscle that we are super interested in. 
it is mostly voluntary, meaning that you tell it what to do and when to do it, and it is ruled by your somatic nervous system. Um, if you're curious about what actually makes up skeletal muscle, you can check out a previous episode of um, Anatomy with Alex where I talked all about what makes up a muscle and how muscles contract just a few weeks ago. Um, but you, um, again, you can control it yourself and this type of muscle and all muscle really, but skeletal muscle, which is to me the most interesting, um, is covered in fascia. So fascia is a connective tissue. Uh, we have talked about fascia before and, um, it extends for, beyond the muscle. So you have like the muscle cells themselves and then the fascia extends from bone to bone. It's what makes the tendons that attaches the muscle, um, you know, to its anchor points to the bone. And the layers of fascia have their own unique names as well, the multiple layers. So it's not just, you know, a wrapping around, but there's fascia within the muscle. There's fascia, um, you know, making different bundles within the muscle. There's a lot of connective tissue that cannot, in some cases can't be removed, in other cases can be removed um, from the muscle. And we've talked about this before. Um, the outer layer is called the epimyceum. And this one you cannot peel off the muscle at all. Um, another layer that breaks uh, the muscle into groupings called fascicles, that's called the paramyceum. And the innermost layer, the smallest layer, microscopic, you can't see it, but around muscle fibers is called the endomyceum. And again, if you wanna learn more, see pictures of that, um, check out previous episode of Anatomy with Alex. Uh, all you have to do is click the hashtag in the description of this video, and it will pull up all the previous episodes of Anatomy with Alex, so you can find it super easily, which is pretty fun. So fascia, it's this ubiquitous connective tissue. It's all throughout your body. It's literally everywhere. If you just pinch your cheeks, you're touching fascia right now. So um, I went two weeks ago to a lecture all about fascia with my anatomy teacher, Gil Headley. And I'll put his email, or not his email, but his website down in the comments where um, Gil Headley is just so cool. And if you're interested in anatomy and uh, cadaver dissection, he is the guy to do it with. He does compassionate cadaver dissections and it was just such a life-changing experience when I did it with him. So two weeks ago I went to a lecture and he shared this really cool way, a uh, new way for me to understand how to help you also understand the differences of fascia. So right now you have your skin, right? But if you touch your skin really softly, especially on a part where you know you have some flesh there, do you feel how there's that springy quality to it, right? Not if you press too hard, but there's a little bit of squish. Yeah, Gil rocks over there on Instagram. Yes, he does, right? So do you feel that squish? So that's the first layer of fascia, and that's called your superficial fascia. And superficial fascia is the subcutaneous fat layer. And it's this uh, directly beneath your skin, it's almost, it's not impossible, but it takes a lot of work to peel your skin away from the superficial fascia. And it's not just fat. Some people will say, no, 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 that's just fat. But Gil did this really cool thing where um, they cut sheets of fat and then massaged it for, I think he said something like four to five hours. They just massaged this you know, sheet of fat and all of the fat cells dropped out so that all they were left with was the connective tissue portion, the collagen portion of superficial fascia. And let me tell you, it is super insanely strong. They were able to clip, uh, you know, 50 or plates to it, like clamps, and then pick up 52 pounds with the sheet of fat. And the whole sheet of fat, you know, stretched from end to end, and then it came back together. It was so super cool. So your fatty layer, the superficial fascia, remember that spongy layer, it's super strong, it's super cool. Don't try to blast it or break it up or send it anywhere, it's awesome. Um, as I said, this is where adipose is. Another, uh, you know, to get an idea of what it looks like, you know, on a cloudy day when you look outside and there's like um, a bunch of teeny tiny clouds in the sheet in the sky, that's pretty much exactly what superficial fascia looks like just up in the sky, so that's pretty cool. Uh, its function is to store fat and hormones to fill space. If there's, uh, you know, an empty space, your superficial fascia and those adipose cells will go in there and fill the space. Uh, behind your Achilles tendon on the back of your heel, 
there's actually a lot of fat back there to fill up that space behind the back of your shin bone and the Achilles. So no empty space in your body anywhere there is. It is filled with this adipose. Um, insulation, obviously, right, keeps us warm. Um, and proprioception, you have special nerve endings, which we talked about in, a couple weeks ago on Anatomy with Alex. Um, and also tissue repair happens here. There are cells here within the fat layer that help to lay down scar tissue in the case of an injury. You have the most sensation here, most innervation in this uh, area. Um, and as I said, this is where scar tissue and wound healing can occur within that spongy layer. And you can also feel how the spongy layer on the back side of your arm is different than the spongy layer on the inside of your arm. So also, you know, if you go to the face and you press there, that also is superficial fascia, but it has a different quality than the superficial fascia on your neck or the superficial fascia on the side of your waist or the superficial fascia on your thigh. It's all the same layer. It just has different qualities depending on where it is. So deep, 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 deep to that is the deep fascia. Now that's if you press even harder. So before I was doing a really light touch. Now I want you to press even harder and slide your fingers around and you can feel that there's like a different texture uh, quality to what you're touching. So that's deep fascia. Um, and, you know, maybe you can feel it a little bit easier in your palm as well. Oh, Ethan and Amanda, hel hello. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so deep fascia connects, surrounds, binds, and separates. And this is the layer, when we talk about skeletal muscle, deep fascia is like the last wrapping around your muscles. Um, it's really dense. It does have some elasticity, but not a huge amount of stretch. I mean, we're talking maybe 1% to 3% of its total length. Your IT band, which is the outside of your thigh, that's deep fascia. And so you can feel that, how that has a different texture than if you just do the light touch. I'm touching my thigh right now. The light touch to feel the superficial fascia. So uh, plantar fascia, that's the connective tissue on the bottom of your foot. These are all representations of deep fascia. Um, it can be removed from a muscle. So you can actually peel deep fascia away from muscle uh, in your kitchen too. Uh, you know, if you have a chicken breast with the skin on, you're peeling the skin off and there's that other layer, you know, that kind of filmy stuff you can peel off the chicken. Um, that's probably some type of fascia that you're peeling off. Sorry if you're having chicken tonight. It's probably not going to be the same. Okay. The last layer of connective tissue is loose fascia. And so if you grab a hold of your arm again and you pull up and down, do you feel how there's a slide to it, but that this sliding ability is also not never ending, right? There's a definite end stop to it. This is because there's another layer of filmy fascia called loose fascia. And this is a transition layer that appears between deep fascia and the superficial fascia, those two layers we just talked about. But also organs have layers of loose fascia in between themselves as well. So this loose fascia, just as it does here, it allows for movement to happen. It lets movement happen uh, where it needs to happen so that you can move and express yourself in all the ways that you need to. And this is a layer that Gil Headley, if you've ever seen the video, I'll post it into the comments below, um, what he calls fuzz. So the fuzz is loose fascia. Ethan says, I always feel like I'm performing a dissection when I eat meat these days. I know. Sometimes I have to turn that part of my brain off so I don't think of that. All right, so the big question will be, well, why do, like, why does this matter? Why do I need to care about the different types of fascia and different types of muscle? Well, how you stretch or massage them or attempt to treat them is going to be dependent on what you're actually going after. If I'm trying to do some sort of, uh, you know, fluid drainage or fluid movement through my superficial fascia, and I'm just going to town, um, you're going to be too intense. It's going to bypass some of the um, tissues you're trying to target. So lymphatic drainage, for example, you know, super soft touch rather than a deep fascia where I might want to get in there and try to create some motion. Um, but as I've always said, what we're trying to do in the body is just make movement happen where it's not happening already. So there you have it. There are the three 
three types of muscle and three types of fascia in the human body. Um, if you guys have any questions, again, just feel free to drop them down into the comment box below. Next week, I'll be talking about knee ligaments. So ACL, PCL, MCL, oh my. So next Wednesday at 3.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Be sure you tune in for that episode of Anatomy with Alex. Um, and also in the description for this video is a link for a free email sequence, email series of fixes for your neck and shoulders. So if you go like this and you say, ah, I got three things that you need to try right now to help alleviate some of that. And that's in the description for this video. Uh, when you see the announcement for this video go up on Facebook, don't forget you can also click get notified. And the minute I hit live, it'll send you a little notification to let you know that I'm here. Um, but I'll see you guys next week. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Um, keep it nerdy and I'll see you later, body nerds. All right, take care. Bye.